Our first video on circles is going to look at the basic part of the circle. We're going to talk about some terminology. So our very first one here, we have solve for x. So we have our circle. We have a center at k. So when I look at the center at k, I have a piece coming out of the center, going from the circle to the outside, that's called a radius. So a radius, again, is going to go from the center of the circle, and it's going to go and touch the outside of the circle. You probably know this already, but one of the first things that you should know about a circle, that in a circle, all radii are going to be congruent. So I see that this over here is another radius. These are both radii. So these two pieces are going to be congruent to each other. So I can set 2x minus 3 equal to 31. Go ahead and solve for x. So we're going to add our 3 over. 2x is going to be equal to 34. It's 2 times x, so we divide to move that 2 over. And we're going to get x is equal to 17. So again, the radius is going from the center of the circle to the outside of the circle. When we go on to our next one, we want to find the measure of segment AB. So I see A is on this side of the circle, and B is on this side of the circle, and it's going through the center here. So going back on the last problem, we have a radius. A radius goes from the center to the outside, from the center to the outside. So we could look at this as two radii, breaking in that center. So if that's 60, this is also going to be 60, giving me that the length of segment AB is 120. But this is going to bring up a new vocab word. Segment AB is actually a diameter. A diameter is a line on the circle that goes through the center. Now the diameter could be formed by two radii, in this circumstance. Now I could have these, sorry, these two radii in number one, that does not form a diameter because it's not a straight line going through the center. But when we look at this one, we have a straight line going through the center that's going to cut our circle in half. No matter where our radius is, it's always going to be cutting that circle in half. All right, our next one. Now we have a center at S. We want to find the measure of arc P, T, R. So as we look at this, we have three letters. We see this notation. That's our arc notation. I'm going to follow that path. So I'm going to start at P, and then I'm going to go to T, and then I'm going to go to R. So what I'm looking for here is the measure of this arc. Now that's considered a major arc. If an arc is more than half the circle, it's a major arc. If it's less than half the circle, it's a minor arc. And if it's exactly half the circle, it's a semicircle. So we want to look at this major arc right here from P to T to R. I can't do that just yet. What we need to look at is a little bit more terminology. We see that we have an angle measure down here, and this angle right here is 47. Since the center of our circle is at S, this is considered a central angle. A central angle is any angle that comes from the center of your circle. And the good thing about a central angle is that the angle and the arc have the same number of degrees. So if this angle is 47, then this arc is 47. So this is a minor arc. When I name minor arcs, I only name them with two letters. So this would be minor arc PQ. This is also a minor arc QR, which is 23. Do you know how many degrees are in a circle? There are 360 degrees in a circle. So if there's that many degrees in a circle, that's how many degrees are in that arc all around the circle. So I see here that this part is 47, this part is 23. Everything else is what I'm looking for. So to find the measure of this big major arc on the outside, I'm going to do 360 minus that 47 
and minus that 23 from above. So again, we subtracted out these two angle measures because we were looking for that major arc, everything that was left over after that. And we find that the measure of that arc PTR is 290 degrees. Move on to the next one. We want to find X. We are given that N is the center of the circle. So since N is the center, this is a central angle, and that means that it is congruent to its intercepted arc. So remember over here we had the 47 degree that was the central angle. The angle and the intercepted arc have the same measurement. So whatever this angle is, this arc is. Well, if we think way back when to unit one, here's an arc, an angle. This is a vertical angle. Those vertical angles means that the angles are congruent. So if these angles are congruent, then their intercepted arcs are congruent because they are central angles. And we've talked about that the central angle has the same measure as its arc. So if these angles are congruent, then their intercepted arcs are congruent. So we can set 5x plus 10 equal to 40. To solve for x, we subtract that 10 over. 5x equals 30. 5 times x, so we divide by x, 5. And we find that x is going to be equal to 6. All right, we're going to complicate things a little bit here. We look at our what we're given. We are given a center at L, we are given that the measure of angle, so we really got to pay attention to our um, notation and what we are referring to. So this is an angle PLR, so angle PLR means that we're referencing right here that this angle is 47 degrees. Now we went arc PA, arc PA right here is 12x plus 16 and arc AI from here to here is going to be 8x plus 4. So what we want to do is we want to solve for x. We want to find the measure of angle PLA. We want to find the measure of arc AI and PR and P I A. All right, so we've got a lot to do. Let's go ahead and start by finding what X is going to be. Now, when we look at this, we have to think about what we've talked about so far, radii, diameters, central angles, arcs. And the one thing that is missed the most often that we forget about is the diameter. When I look at PI right here. Segment PI is going through that center L, which means it's cutting that circle in half, giving us a semicircle. If the whole circle is 360, then each half is going to be 180. And we often forget to utilize that aspect here. So when I look here, arc PA and arc AI, together those two arcs are giving me that semicircle. So I add those pieces together and I set them equal to 180 because that's creating my semicircle. Combine our like terms, we've got 20x plus 20 equals 180. We move our 20 over, 20x equals 160. We divide by 20 and we find x is going to be equal to 8. So first thing done, we found X. Next, we want to find the measure of angle PLA. So I'm looking for this angle right here, PLA. So I have an expression for the arc. We know that X is 8, so I'm going to plug that in. 12 times 8 plus 16. So that gives us 96 plus 16 which is going to give us 112. 
That is the measure of the arc. But the angle's coming from the center, and that central angle means it's going to be the same measure as the arc. The measure of angle, PLA, is also going to be 112 degrees. All right, our next one, we want to find the measure of the arc AI. So for AI, we have the expression there. We have what X is equal to. So we plug that in. 64 plus 4 is going to give us 68. So now we know that the measure of arc AI is 68 degrees. Next, we want the mark PR, arc PR. So my arc PR right here, it's connected to that central angle. 47 is coming from the center of the circle, which means it's going to be the same. So the measure of arc PR is also going to be 47 degrees. Utilizing that central angle intercepted arc relationship a lot. And our last one, we want to find the measure of arc PIA. So now that I have three letters, I know I'm looking to look at a major arc, which is going to be more than half my circle. I follow, I go from P, I need to hit I first. If I were to go left, I would hit A first. So I'm going to go from P all the way to I, keep going to A. So I want to find the measure of this whole thing right here. It's more than half my circle. And if I think about that diameter again, this half of the circle is 180. And then all I have to do is add on this arc AI. So the measure of arc PIA is that semicircle plus arc AI, and we found that AI was 68. So the measure of that major arc PIA is 248 degrees. So make sure you're utilizing the central angles that are congruent to their intercepted arc, as well as the semicircle is going to cut that circle in half, 180 degrees. All right, our last thing here, we have the measure of arc EN. So the arc is way out here, and that is 6x plus 8. And arc EJ is 41. And arc JU is 9x minus 31. We want to find x and arc and u. So the good thing is when we look at our diagram, I have these pieces marked as congruent. So I'm told that these two arcs are congruent, which is good. So to solve for x, all I have to do is set the two arcs that I was provided with equal to each other. I move the smaller of my two x's so that I keep x positive. 9 minus 6 is going to give us 3x. We add that 31 over. We get 39 equals 3x. It's 3 times x. So we divide by 3, and we find that x is equal to 13. So the first part is done. Now we want to find arc n u. So the first thing I do is I look to see if it's some way connected to a diameter, which it's not. I don't even have the center of my circle given to me here. So NU is this piece. I don't have an expression for it, but I do have an expression for all the other pieces. We found that X was 13. So I'm going to plug in 13. And we get 6 times 13 plus 8 is going to give us 86. We were told that this section was 41. And I could plug 13 in here as well, but I already know that those two pieces are congruent, so I know that's going to be 86 as well. So to find this missing arc, that's what's left over. The whole circle is 360. So I subtract the 186, and then I subtract the other arc of 41, and then that last arc of 86, 
and NU is the piece that is left over. So the measure of arc NU is 147 degrees. All right, and that is it for your video.